Somebody millions didn't make it this far. But tell him he's worthy of my praise. I could have been in the number, but he let me live. Somebody lift your hands like you're grateful and say he's worthy of my praise. I bless his name. Glory to God. Why don't you be true and say there were times you didn't think you were going to make it. But I'm still here. Lord, I thank you. I'm not in the hospital. I'm not hooked up to tubes. I'm not being pumped with medicine. I'm not laying in the funeral home. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I'm above ground and I know it. I'm above ground and I know it. Tell somebody I'm what he's worthy to be praised. Tell somebody I don't care how bad your situation is. It could be a whole lot worse. He's worthy to be praised. Lord have mercy. What kind of church is this? We're a grateful church. We're a thankful church. Lord have mercy. Amen. In spite of all. Amen. In spite of all I've been through, brothers and sisters. 
at on on this day, 12 11 at 11 o'clock a.m. sharp. He's still worthy of my best praise. Ask somebody, have you given God your best praise yet today? I know some of y'all still warming up, but tell somebody it's time to catch on fire. Because he's worthy. Oh, oh. All right. He's worthy. Amen. So I'm... Somebody said it's too much, but this ain't enough. When you really look back over your life and see how many times the devil tried to destroy you, what you gave him ain't enough. He's really worth it more than this. David said, if you think this is something, just wait until he brings me out of what I'm in right now. grateful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to amen preach, but amen. Just nug drudge shoulders with somebody and tell them, make sure you put your praise in today. Amen. And as sister, amen. We're going to preach. Amen. We got a, another appointment at four. Amen. But I was thinking about what Minister Smalls said about being grateful and being thankful and my mind ran back to the ten lepers and, and, and all of them after coming in contact with Jesus amen really got healed but only one came back to say thank you and, 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 and Pastor Lawrence when I thought about sitting right there I thought about it and you know the Bible doesn't describe what his thank you look like it, it doesn't say what his thank you look like it just said he told God thank you and I want to tell somebody your thank you may look different than mine but you ought to give him a thank you your thank you may be a run your thank you may be a holler. Your thank you may be tears falling from your eyes. Your thank you may be a praise with your feet. But tell somebody, give him a thank you. Give him, give him, give him, give him, give him. Oh, 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 oh. Tell God thank you. let her use her feet because there were days she was off them and couldn't do what she's doing right now so why you think she's crazy she's giving God praise because she could be six feet under I wish I had somebody here that would tell you they would look at me how you want to I'm gonna give him praise don't tell me what my thank you ought to look like you weren't there. They gave up on you. Threw in the towel on you. Turned their back on you. But look at God. All right, we're going to preach. Amen. Tell somebody I'm a God thing. I'm a, I'm a God thing, amen, because if it had not been for him, amen, I wouldn't be here today, amen, so I'm grateful, amen, I'm thankful, amen, and, and the closer we come to the end of 2022, the more thankful I become, amen, glory to God, there are at least four pastors that I know recently, amen, that has uh, transition from earth to glory and their churches are left without pastors amen but look at God 
Hallelujah to God. Amen. I thank him. I'm still here. Glory to God. I give him praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God today. Amen. And while I'm here, I'm going to give him all I got. Because the truth of the matter is no man know the day nor the hour. When the son of man shall come. But he told us to do what? Be ready. Glory to God. Be ready. So I'm thankful today. Amen. For being here. Glory to God. Amen. And I give him praise for this second Sunday in the year of 2022. Amen. I'm grateful for my wife today, Lady Baxter. I'm thankful. Amen. For all of our house pastors and all of our deacons, our mothers, ministers, amen, the saints of the greater true light, and certainly to all of our visiting friends, if you're visiting greater true light for the first time, would you just lift your hand up and wave at us so we'll know who you are, amen, God bless you, sir, we're so glad to have you with us, amen, bless you, amen, bless you, sir, so glad to have you with us, and we pray that you have felt the love of God amen and certainly the presence of the lord amen since you've been in this house we're a little radical but we believe in giving god everything we got amen hallelujah amen the only place we want to be quiet is in church amen we go to the football game baseball game basketball game we go to six flags and we holler to the top of our lungs amen and we come to church and we want to be solemn Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. But tell somebody he's been too good to me to hush. Y'all don't want to say nothing. Tell somebody he's been a little too good to me for me to be quiet on him. I'm going to let the world know that he's my God. I bless the Lord, amen, that I, that I found a crowd that love him like I do. <laughs> amen, I found a crowd that love him the way I do, amen. And, and don't look at me funny when I start leaping and jumping and running, amen. They help me give God the praise, amen. I'm going to preach and get out of your way, but I'm grateful. Amen for what the Lord has done to praise and worship today, our youth praise and worship. Amen. Hallelujah to the great musicians. Amen. We honor each of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> just tell somebody, I just love it. That's all. I just love it. All right. Let's go. Thank you. My God, I just love it. Hallelujah. I just love it. Amen. Let's go. I want to go today. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. My God. Amen. We get caught up. Amen. Telling God, thank you. I want to go today. I'm aware of your patience. <laughs> My, 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 my. Philippians chapter number three. Amen. <sighs> For 
Philippians chapter number three. And we're going to read, amen, verses 13 and 14 in your hearing. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. When I when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul, that's what you hear. You're hearing souls crying out. Glory to God. We're thankful. Hallelujah for what the Lord has done. Glory to God for us. Glory to God. Amen. Philippians chapter 3. Amen. Verses 13 and 14. Uh, and then we will look at Luke chapter 2. Uh, verses 41 through 52 in your hearing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We desire your prayers. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for everything that you've done. We give you praise for what you're about to do through your word. Anoint your servant afresh and use us for your glory. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Have your way. Somebody in this room today needs you. God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Somebody in here needs you. Somebody came in this door today looking for you. Father, we thank you that we don't have to ask you to come. You're already here. We simply say continue to have your way. Speak to their heart. Speak to their minds. Speak to their situation. Work things out on their behalf through your word. Let them hear you and cry out, what must I do to be saved? I've got my answer in the word of God. I thank you now in the name of Jesus for the anointing that shall make preaching easy, but cause it to be effective. He'll deliver and set free in the midst of your people. And we give you thanks now. The devil is already defeated. Father, you are exalted and we do have victory. Thank you for strengthening your servant to preach one more time. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. Philippians chapter 3. Glory to God. Amen. Verses 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. 14 says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. Tell somebody I haven't arrived yet. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Glory to God. And I'm reaching forward to those things which are before. I'm pressing toward the mark uh, of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter number 2. Amen. Verses 41 through 52. And I want to read from the New Living Translation of the text. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we'll speak to you out of the word of God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52 from the New Living Translation, it says, every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, <clears throat> they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. Verse 45, when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Verse 47, all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. 
Uh, his parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. Verse 49 says, but why did you need to search, he asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Verse 50, but they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew, verse 52, in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Come on and shout hallelujah. Amen. I want to, amen, glory to God, particularly look at that, amen, 48th and 49th verse that says his parents didn't know what to think when they couldn't find him. And the Bible says that the mother said, son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search? He asked, didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Amen. Other translation says, did you not know I must be about my father's business? Come on and shout hallelujah. I want to talk today for a few moments from the thought, focus on the finish. <clears throat> Amen. Come on, tell somebody, focus on the finish. Amen. Focus on the finish. You may be seated. Focus on the finish. Brothers and sisters, we made it, amen, to the 12th month of 2022. Glory to God. I want to say it one more time. We made it, amen, to the 12th month of 2022. Glory to God for some that is, amen, something, glory to God, that many thought that they would not come to, amen, glory to God, the, when they look back over the last 11 months, amen, many things have taken place in many of our lives, glory to God, and we are just simply, as Minister Small said, grateful, amen, that we've come this far by faith. Amen. Glory to After all the things you've come through, uh, you can rejoice in the fact that you've made it to the final month of another year. I want to declare to you this morning that God allowed you to live after all that you have come through and after all that could have happened, all that should have happened and all that did happen, God allowed you to live, glory to God, because he's not through blessing you. Amen. Come on, would you encourage somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, God let you live because he's not through with you. He's not through blessing you. You. he's not through prospering you he's not through using you there is more that God wants to do in you through you and with you come on and shout hallelujah Amen. There are things that God still wants to do in your life. Glory to God. I want to talk to somebody here this morning because, amen, glory to God, some of you are merely, amen, walking through life. Glory to God. And in your process of walking through life, amen, glory to God, some of you are not focused. Some of you, amen, have not set, amen, any particular goals for your life. Glory to God. Some of us are just merely existing and going through life and and letting things come as they may. Amen. But I want to suggest to you this morning that there are things that God still wants to do in your life. You do realize, amen, that you are here because of him. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he know the thoughts or the plans that he thinks towards you. He knows why he has allowed you to be here. He knows why he has given you life. He knows why he has placed you in the earth for such a time as this. And the Bible says, for I know the plans that I think toward you, said the Lord. These are plans for good and not for evil to give you answers and expected in glory to God and so what we must understand is that there are things that God still wants to do in your life there are things that God wants to do through your life and there are things that God wants to do for your life come on and tell God thank you amen and so even so 
And so even though, amen, we've made it to the 12th month of the year, I want somebody to help me shout, it's not over. Amen. I need you to understand that it's not over. It's something about when you're almost through with something or you're coming to the close of a day or when you're almost finished with a project that we start slowing down. Our pace, amen, starts slowing down and we become relaxed. We become, uh, amen, uh, we begin to take ease or we become uh, taking very easy processes and uh, we start wearing ourselves down and going the opposite direction slowing things down in our life like we start becoming more and more relaxed and we begin to think within ourselves like that we can cruise our way uh, to the close or the completion uh, of whatever it is that we're currently working on and whereas that may be true for some situations in your physical life like, however in the spirit brothers and sisters uh, in your spiritual walk with God in your spiritual life like somebody shout not so not so uh, the Bible encourages us like throughout scripture to remain vigilant God uh, amen come on the Bible recalls us uh, to remain vigilant remain sober in our mind uh, the Bible encourages us to be aware uh, and to stay alert uh, and to stay attentive uh, come on and shout hallelujah simply because the adversary our adversary your adversary uh, the Bible says he's yet roaming to and fro uh, throughout the earth seeking whom he may devour and as soon as you release your cover as soon as you relax as soon as you become unalert and unaware and unattentive the enemy slips in and causes you come on here and causes you to miss the mark I want to stop by here today to tell somebody remain vigilant amen tell somebody keep it going keep it going amen if you've been praying all year long don't stop praying now if you've been reading your bible you're going to God don't stop reading now if you've been working on your faith don't stop working on it now if you've been working on being true being genuine amen tell somebody don't stop working on it now keep on working on your relationship with God because the closer we come to the end of time the more of him you're going to need God I praise you amen glory to God the Bible teaches the believer to remain vigilant amen remain sober minded remain alert remain aware come on and tell somebody remain 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 amen come on talk to your neighbor and say neighbor don't lose your focus now come on don't lose your focus listen if that person sitting next to you won't look at to reach behind you huh, and tell them don't lose your focus now glory to God amen can anybody testify you've come too far amen and you've been through too much uh, you've prayed too hard uh, to get to where you are right now uh, as a matter of fact you can lift your voice and shout uh, it took focus for me to stay focused uh, I had to discipline my mind uh, had to discipline my heart uh, had to discipline my flesh uh, had to discipline my attitude uh, I had to be in charge hallelujah uh, of my spirit uh, so that I could stay focused focus on what I'm supposed to be focused on God have mercy oh my God it takes energy my God it takes amen a spiritual connection in order to remain focused amen in a time where so many things are fighting for your attention hallelujah to God there's so many things that are fighting for our mind fighting for our attention amen the mind is the battleground and so there's so many things that's fighting for your attention fighting for your time fighting for your heart fighting for your spirit there's so many things that's fighting for your future but tell somebody I'm focused on God in him I want to live in him I want to move 
and in him I want to have my being. One thing I understand, glory to God, is I can't get nowhere without him. Some of you don't even realize that where you've come to in your life, you think it was you that did it. When the truth of the matter is, it was God, the plan of God that has you where you are. You may not have been serving him. You may not have been living for him. Glory to God, but he was there all the time. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And the truth of the matter is, when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, all that he's done and all that we did not do will be held against us at the seat of judgment. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, simply because he's been trying to pull us to a place. Uh, amen. Where he would have us to be in our heart, uh, in our mind, and in our spirit. Uh, the Bible says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust uh, so I just need you to tell somebody it's been God all the time uh, I know you thought it was you but it was God uh, do you know it was God that put breath in your body to get up uh, it was God that gave you the energy uh, it was God that gave you the wisdom and the intellect and the understanding uh, come on without God you have no mind uh, without God you have no feeling uh, without God y'all ain't saying nothing uh, the Bible said he created man uh, from the dust of the ground huh? and he blew into man the breath of life huh? so everything that's in me is because of he y'all ain't it's because of him who has created me. It is him who have created me and not me myself. I am the sheep of his pasture. That's why the Bible says all souls are mine. God almighty. My God, all souls are mine. Whether you serve me or not, you still belong to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I have just given you the opportunity to choose whether you want to serve me or not I didn't make you a robot I made you a free agent so that you can choose whether you serve the one that loved you the most glory to God whether you would serve the one who loved you the most and so as we're coming to this point I want to tell you don't lose your focus now I'm here the Bible says I am confident of this very thing he that hath begun a good work in me shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ somebody shout he's going to finish it he's going to finish it Amen. Let's talk real quick about the number 12 just for a moment. Uh, the number 12 is considered one of God's perfect numbers. Uh, when you, when we, when we look throughout the scriptures, we discover that Jacob had 12 sons who ultimately became the 12 tribes of Israel. Christ called 12 men to bear witness, who we know to be the 12 apostles, uh, to bear witness to what he did and to spread the good news of the gospel to the entire world. After he was raised from the dead, Jesus told the 11 disciples, like Judas at this point had been killed or had killed himself, like that God had given him all power and authority in both earth and heaven. Amen. Which is now God's authority. Come on and shout hallelujah. We understand there are 12 gates to the city. My God, the new Jerusalem. Amen. There are angels that are standing at every gate. There are three gates in the east and three gates in the west. Three gates in the north. Three gates in the south. Somebody shot 12 gates. There are 12 numbers on a time clock. The woman with the issue of blood suffered 12 years and then came, hallelujah, and found Jesus in the crowd. And it was in the 12th year of her suffering that the woman was healed of her issue. I feel God talking to somebody. My God, in this 12th month, Jairus' daughter was 12 years old when she fell sick and later died but was raised back to life 
again by Jesus. I want you to do me a favor and tell somebody, say, neighbor, there's a miracle coming for me this month. I feel a miracle in December. I wish I had somebody in the house here that tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is going to be a December to remember. Y'all ain't saying nothing because in this month, God's getting ready to turn somebody's life all the way around. Somebody shout, this is my month for a turnaround. Oh my God, this is my month for a turnaround. Uh, there is a miracle coming for me this month. And I keep hearing this in my spirit. Uh, amen. As I was teaching, hallelujah, amen, uh, uh, doing a uh, conducting, uh, our planning meeting on, uh, on yesterday, uh, amen. As I begin to talk and begin to, uh, amen, deal with the people, uh, the Lord brought back to me, uh, Amen. John, hallelujah. Uh, when Jesus was uh, attending the wedding at Cana of Galilee, uh, he was not there to work a miracle. Uh, he was there attending the, uh, the wedding with his mother. Uh, but the Bible said uh, at the wedding they ran out of wine. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna say nothing here. Uh, and the Bible said that Jesus comes on the scene uh, and his mother Mary calls for him. Uh, amen. Glory to God. Uh, and when she calls for him he simply says to her woman my time is not yet but I heard a nickel God as she dismisses his statement and she says to the servants whatever he tells you to do just do it tell somebody this is the season that whatever God tells you to do tell them just do it and if you do it you're going to find out there was a miracle in the making huh? Bible said, the Bible said that uh, uh, when they read, uh, when they ran out of wine, uh, the Bible said that uh, uh, the servants received instructions from Jesus. Uh, and Jesus told them uh, to go get six barrels of water, uh, fill them to the brim. Uh, oh, praise his name. Uh, and when they filled those water barrels to the brim, uh, the Bible said Jesus went over. Uh, go over to God and spoke over the water and when they dipped in the water it came up wine y'all ain't saying nothing they took a cup of the wine amen to amen the king and the bible said when the king drunk the wine hallelujah to God the king said where did this wine come from he said usually he said usually they bring out the best wine in the beginning but my God this time they saved the best for last I stopped by to tell somebody you made it to month number 12 and your best blessing was saved until now I wish you'd look at your neighbor and say neighbor the reason why you're still here is because he saved the best for last the best for last my God somebody's getting ready to be blessed in such a way my God you're going to tell God you blessed me before but I ain't never seen a blessing like this tell somebody he saved the best for last saved the best for last and then the scriptures first recording of Jesus' words occurs when he is 12 years old we'll talk about this in just a moment but Jesus was literally 12 years old when he began to amen speak amen go over to God the words of his father uh, this number 12 symbolizes God's power and his authority uh, as well as serving as a perfect governmental foundation uh, it can also symbolize completeness and wholeness uh, amen glory to God tell somebody God's about to work uh, the whole thing out God I praise you uh, I don't know who needed that but I need you to tell somebody else uh, say neighbor I don't know what you're going through uh, 
Tell him, but whatever it is, huh, he's about to work the whole thing. God, I wish I had a church today. Hallelujah. I wish I had some faith walkers, some faith talkers. The shout, he's about to work the whole thing out. God, he's not going to leave any table unturned. He's going to work the whole thing out. Come on, tell somebody all of it, all of it. I know it don't look like it. I know it don't feel like it, but just hold on. Because the whole thing is getting ready to be worked out. Hallelujah. I want to tell someone that the power and the authority of God, whatever is trying to stand in your way from finishing completely will not work. Amen. You are going to finish whatever it is you're working on. God. And the spirit says, I'm going to finish with a win. I wish you testify to somebody and tell them you're going to finish with a win. No L's this time. Nothing but wins win. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Tell somebody, I got a win coming. I got a win. I got a win. I got a win coming. Uh, again, this number 12 uh, is one of God's perfect numbers. I'm coming. Glory to God. It's one of God's perfect numbers. Uh, and so when we say something is perfect, we are saying uh, uh, that things are just right. When we talk about something being perfect, we, we're saying that things are just right. Uh, 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 don't take nothing away and uh, please don't add anything to it. It's just right. Uh, but the meaning of perfection in the Bible that relates to a state of completeness or absolute wholeness. Uh, uh, biblical perfection involves freedom from fault. Uh, it involves uh, a freedom from defect. and uh, It involves freedom from shortcomings. Uh, uh, in the New Testament, a Greek term for perfection uh, can also mean maturity. Uh, come on and shout hallelujah. Uh, it is what Paul says in Ephesians Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11 uh, for he gave some apostles and some prophets and some pastors and teachers uh, and evangelists uh, for the perfecting of the saints uh, that is for the maturity of the saints uh, for the work of the ministry uh, for the edifying uh, of the body of Christ uh, until we all come into uh, a wholeness uh, until we all come into uh, the unity of the faith y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, tell somebody God's given gifts for wholeness. Uh, he wants his church to be complete. Uh, he wants his church to be together. Uh, and so your gift is not to bring division. Uh, your gift is to bring wholeness. God, uh, tell somebody I came to bring wholeness. Uh, I didn't come to bring division. Uh, I didn't come to bring separation. Uh, I didn't come to stir up mess. Uh, I came to work things out. Uh, I came to make the process easy. I, I came to make men whole. God, I came to make men whole. Glory to God. And so uh, absolute completeness or absolute perfection uh, is a quality that actually belongs to God alone. Yeah. <laughs> there is no one that is completely perfect but God. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody ain't nobody perfect but God. Amen. I know you think I know you think you're the most uh, uh, you're the best thing walking and, and you ought to feel that way uh, about yourself. Uh, but the truth of the matter is everybody got a flaw. God, hallelujah. Amen. I may not know what yours is and uh, you may not know what mine is, but uh, tell somebody everybody got a flaw. Uh, if you are in this earth, you have a flaw. Uh, amen. Come on here. You are from the, uh, uh, the seed. Hallelujah. That has come from Adam. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, we are all formed through uh, that bloodline. Uh, and so every one of us have an idiot, uh, a flaw. Amen. Every one of us have a flaw. Everyone has a flaw. Amen. Glory to God. And so in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, the Bible explicitly states that God is by nature perfect. Be perfect, the Bible says. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect, as God is the perfect being, all that he does is perfect. He is the 
the rock. He, uh, his works are perfect uh, and all his ways are just. Uh, a faithful God who does no wrong. Uh, upright and just is he. Uh, according to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4. Uh, his knowledge is perfect. Uh, his ways are perfect. Uh, his word is flawless. Uh, come on and shout hallelujah. Well, the apostle Paul describes God's will as perfect. Uh, do not conform, the Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, uh, do not conform to this pattern of this world, uh, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, then you will be able to test and prove uh, what God's will is, uh, which is good, pleasing, and a perfect will. Uh, come on and shout Hallelujah. And so when we read Matthew chapter 5 uh, and verse number 48, we discover that God's children are called to be perfect. But this perfection does not mean that humans can obtain the same holy perfection as God. For he alone is set apart in his holiness. However, the call to be perfect here is what the apostle Paul meant when he said uh, that we should be imitators of God. God, I wish I had somebody. Uh, that we be imitators of God uh, as beloved children. Uh, come on and shout hallelujah. Uh, what are you saying as children tend uh, to imitate their parents? Uh, God's children uh, ought to imitate their Lord uh, and their Savior uh, as a reflection of his perfection uh, in the way that we live. Uh, in other words, if God is our God and he is a perfect God. How is the way we prove to the world that we serve him is we imitate him in the earth. Y'all ain't saying nothing. To be like Jesus. Oh, how I long to be like him. So meek and lowly. So humble and holy. Oh, how I long to be like him. Ask somebody, do you want to be like Jesus? My God, do you want to love like him? Do you want to talk like him? Do you want to live like him? The truth of the matter is, we want what Jesus has except for his lifestyle. I know we don't want, we want what, we want what he has. We, we want the blessing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, we want the blessings. We want the miracles. We want the signs and the wonders. Uh, Lord, give me, hallelujah, uh, give me what you have for me. Uh, but the truth of the matter, if we're going to be who he is, uh, and we're going to represent him in the earth, uh, then we must desire to imitate him. Uh, oh my God. Uh, we must desire to be humble, uh, and to be kind and to be sweet and to be all ain't saying nothing and to live lives that people can follow and model themselves after oh my god do people know that you're a Christian beyond your words yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. truth of the matter is many of us people call us church goers my God, are we church goers or are we Christians? My God, if they would close the doors of the church as we have done, my God, were you still able to live like a Christian? <laughs> I'm still able to live like a Christian because David says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I may not be able to get in the building, but if I can get to him, I can do what he would have me to do. I can live like he wants me to live. And so what we discover now, my God, in Luke chapter number two, as I begin to come to a close, we find out in Luke chapter number two, Jesus is the son of God. Come on, somebody say Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. And what we discover about him is that by this time in his life, amen, he has been born of the Virgin Mary. Amen, he is now at the age of 12 years old. 
he has been uh, being raised by earthly parents uh, those of Mary and Joseph uh, amen they were given the task hallelujah uh, by his heavenly father uh, amen to raise him and to cultivate him uh, oh what a privilege uh, amen it was to raise uh, the son of God uh, here it is now Jesus the Messiah uh, who is coming up in age the Bible says he is 12 years old at this time and the Bible says they go to Jerusalem amen to be a part of the Passover festival the Bible says when Jesus is now here they attended the festival as usual but after the celebration was over the Bible said they started home back to Nazareth where they lived but something took place between uh, uh, their leaving uh, and their coming uh, the Bible said that when they left Nazareth uh, uh, when they left Jerusalem uh, on their way to Nazareth uh, the Bible said that the crowd was moving along to Nazareth uh, but Jesus somehow uh, slipped out of the crowd uh, and ended up in the temple uh, Lord I wish I had somebody here uh, look at somebody and say neighbor one day uh, I slipped out the crowd uh, and ended up in the temple uh, y'all listen the word is exciting uh, amen tell somebody one day uh, I slipped out the crowd uh, do I have any people in here ever been in the crowd uh, but one day uh, you found yourself in the church uh, I slipped out the crowd uh, and ended up in the temple uh, the bible says when Jesus uh, ends up in the temple uh, he's there and he's uh, uh, with the doctors and the lawyers. He's with the teachers. Amen. Of the word of God. And the Bible says that while he is there. The parents get to Nazareth. And they start looking for their son. Anybody ever lost a child? Oh my. Anybody ever went to a, in your house and you were calling your child's name and they didn't answer? Amen. You've been to the playground and they didn't call your name and they didn't answer? In the mall, you're walking and you're supposed to be holding hands and you look back and the child is further back than you anticipated them to be? Come on and shout hallelujah. And so what takes place is when they get to Nazareth, Jesus Jesus is not there. Oh my God. The Bible says they become frantic. My God, they begin to worry and said, Where is our son? Where did Jesus go? I thought he was in the crowd with us. Jesus is missing. The Bible says for three days they looked for him and couldn't find him. And they decided what we're going to do we're going to go back where we left him we're going to go back to where amen the last place we saw him and the bible said they went back to Jerusalem and when they got back to Jerusalem they ended up at the temple come on and shout hallelujah uh, amen. Three days later, they finally uh, discovered Jesus in the temple. Uh, and the Bible said that Jesus was sitting among the religious teachers. Uh, and he was listening to them. Uh, and he was asking them questions. Uh, and the Bible says, as they observed him, uh, my God, they were amazed. Uh, their son's understanding and at their son's answers to these questions his parents didn't know what to think and so the bible says when Mary got a hold of Jesus that Mary said to Jesus why have you done this to us can you hear Mary fussing can you hear Mary upset can you hear Mary like some of you mothers feeling like snatching up Jesus come on and shout hallelujah but look at Jesus here the Bible said that she asked him 
why have you done this to us? Your daddy and I have been frantic searching for you. We've looked for you everywhere and we could not find you. Come on and shout hallelujah. But I heard Jesus' response at the year of 12 years old. At the age of 12 years old, Jesus' response to his mother was simply this. But why did you need to search for me? In other words, you knew who gave you to me. You knew when I came here that I didn't come here, hallelujah, through a physical direction. I came through a spiritual tunnel. Come on and say yes, Lord. And if you knew who sent me, yes, Lord, into the earth. Come on and say yes, Lord. Why did you not know where to find me? If I wasn't in the crowd, then you look for me in the church. Come on and say yes, Lord. But I heard the Bible say that when Jesus asked this, the next question is where my text come from or where my thought come from. He asked her this, did you know that I must be in my father's house? Touch somebody and say, neighbor, Jesus was focused on the finish. Jesus knew at the age of 12 years old that he had purpose in the earth. Jesus knew at the age of 12 years old that he was being set up to be the savior. Come on and say yes, Lord. And the Bible tell me that when Jesus says this, that Mary didn't understand. Why didn't she understand? Because she was still looking, looking at Jesus as a son in the physical and not at the savior in the supernatural. Tell somebody, say neighbor, in this last month of 2022, I'm going to be focused like never before. I'm focusing on my finish. The Bible said that when he says this, she didn't understand what Jesus was saying. He returned to Nazareth with her and was obedient to his mother and father. But I want to tell you that even though Jesus returned to Nazareth, his mind was focused on the finish. He was focused on why he came. He was focused on the will of his father. So much so that the 52nd verse of that chapter said Jesus grew in wisdom and Jesus grew in stature and Jesus grew in favor with God and all the people tell somebody said neighbor God getting you ready for something big God getting you ready for something greater God getting you ready for something you know not of come on shake your neighbor hand and say neighbor God getting you ready for something big you can't see it now but stay focused you can't see it now but keep your eyes on the prize yeah yes lord i got to close but before i do i want you to go over to philippians chapter number three i heard paul said brethren i count not myself to have apprehended 
But this one thing that, that I do, how I'm forgetting how those things how that are behind. How shake somebody how by the hand how and say, neighbor, how in this month, how the first thing how I'm going to do how is focus how on forgetting. How I'm going to focus how on letting go how my past. How I'm going to focus how on letting go how those that hurt me. How I'm going to focus how on letting go how those that mistreated me. How I'm focusing how on letting go how my past. How my past how has some mistakes. How my past how has some heartache. How my past how has some pain. How but shake your neighbor how by the hand how and say neighbor how focus how on forgetting how don't take it how into your future how let it go how tell the devil how he's a liar how I'm gonna forgive how those that hurt me how I'm gonna forgive how those that angered me how I'm gonna forgive how those that let me down how I'm picking up I'm picking up how in my present how I'm picking up how in my present how as for me how and my house how we're gonna serve how the law how y'all better help me how somebody how in the room how tell your neighbor how focus how on forgetting how and then how Paul said how I'm forgetting how those things how that are behind how but I'm reaching how but I'm reaching how for those things how that are before how focus how on your future how somebody how sitting up in here how you worried how about your present how you worried how about your bills how you worried how about money how you worried how about this how that and the other how but I stopped by how to tell you how give no place how to the enemy how tell the devil how my mind how is made up how I'm on my way how to the future how somebody how open your mouth how and shout come on how open your mouth how and shout how I'm focused how on my future how there's something how greater how that's waiting how on my arrival how somebody how wake up how your neighbor how and say neighbor how focus how on your future how something how something how is waiting how on me how yeah what we do huh, is we give so much huh, time huh, and energy huh, oh my god huh, to what we've been through huh. can I tell you something huh, if your past huh, could have taken you out huh, you'd already huh, be dead huh. tell somebody huh, stop giving huh, your energy huh, to your past huh. Change it, huh? shift it huh? toward huh? your future. Huh? Listen to me, huh? you're still alive. Huh? You could have been gone, huh? but you're still alive. Huh? You've been through huh? some hard things, huh? but you're still alive. Huh? I wish I had huh? somebody huh? in the room huh? that would help me huh? make the devil mad. Huh? Get out your seat, huh? go and find huh? Three people huh, and tell them how huh, after all how huh, I've been through how huh, I'm still alive huh, after all how huh, I've been through how huh, I'm still alive huh, they talked about me huh, but I'm still alive huh, they lied on me huh, but I'm still alive huh, hallelujah huh, I've been addicted huh, but I'm still alive huh, I've had habits huh, but I'm still alive huh, I've been in accidents, huh, but I'm still alive. Huh? I've been in surgery, huh, but I'm still alive. Huh? 
I've been broken, but I'm still, but I'm still, I'm still, still alive. My heart has been broken, but I'm still alive. I've been, hallelujah, to funeral, after funeral, after funeral, after funeral, but I'm, but I'm, still alive. I wish I had somebody that would lift up your voice and shout. I'm still alive. If you're alive, lift your voice and shout. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Open your mouth. Let hell know you didn't kill me. You didn't kill me. You didn't kill me. You were setting me up to destroy me. But God. But God. But God. I'm closing. I heard Paul when he said, forgetting those things which are behind, but reach for those things that are before. Here it is, press. Tell somebody, press toward the mark. Push on somebody and say, neighbor, I don't mean no harm, but you got to push. Press, press toward the mark for the prize. There's a prize in the press. There's a prize coming out of the press. Somebody open your mouth and shout. Focus on the finish. Focus. Focus. Focus on the finish. Focus on the finish. Look at somebody say focus, focus, focus. Focus. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let the problem stop you. Don't let the child stop you. Don't turn around. I hear the old song of the church. But I'll let nothing turn me around. I'm going to keep on to Galilee. Don't let nothing happen. Don't let nobody turn you around. Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor, focus, focus, focus on the finish. Listen, this is what the last thing I want to tell you. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, go back. The Spirit of the Lord told me to tell this church, don't worry about dying now. Uh, look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't care. How many people fall asleep around me? I shall live and not die to declare the work of the Lord. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. You gonna finish alive. You gonna finish alive. Tell somebody. I may have to die one day, but 2022 is not my year. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. Yo, just slap about five people, high five, and say, alive, 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 alive. You gon' finish alive. 
You go finish alive. You go finish alive. We go finish alive. Live mothers. Live mothers. Live mothers. Live mothers. Live mothers. Live deacons. Live elders. Live ministers. Live choir. Live praise and worship. Live greater true light. Live visitors. Live. 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 Open your mouth and shout live. Granny, live. Mother Moldy, live. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Courtney live. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Mother Green live. Mother McQueen live. Mother Johnson live. Mother Murphy live. Mother Hemingway live. Mother Hemingway live. Somebody grab your neighbor and say neighbor live, live, live. Some brother, some brother touch another brother. Some sister touch another sister and say, you can't die now. You got to live. Focus on living. Focus on living. Focus on living. You got work to do. You got work to do. I ain't gonna live to be no hellion. I ain't gonna live to be no gossiper. I ain't gonna live to be no liar. I'm gonna live to live holy. I'm gonna live to be a light. I'm gonna live to be an example. Somebody shall live. Focus. 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 Focus on finishing. There's so many things I had to I had to tell myself because there were so many falling asleep around me. Y'all, y'all do understand that death has no age. And that thing started trying to, trying to grip me. It tried to cause me to fear. But one day I said to God, I said, you ain't finished with me. There's still work for me to do. There's still things you want me to accomplish. And I can't go nowhere until you finish with me. I told the devil he's a liar. You know what? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Stop thinking about death and start thinking about life. Tell somebody, command yourself to live. You, you, you got to go around in your house. You got to go around in your house when it's just you and God. And just throw your hands up in the atmosphere. And say there's life in this house. Ain't nothing dying in here. We gonna live. in your car shot that life around me we gonna live no 
matter how hard it gets, no matter how rough it gets, point your finger at somebody and say, I command you to live. I hear somebody saying, I ain't got nothing to live for. The devil is a liar. Tell somebody, I got a whole lot to live for. Live and he love me. Die and he save me. Bury and he carry my sins far away. Rather than he justify. Free me forever. One day. He's coming back, glorious, yeah. glorious day. Just about, I'm gonna live because He loves me. Living, He loves me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified. Forever. One day, one day, he's coming back. Glorious, glorious day. Come on, tell somebody you got to live. You got to live. I bind every spirit that want to cancel your assignment to live. The devil is a liar. There's life in you. Your house is going to live. Your husband is going to live. Your wife is going to live. Your children are going to live. Somebody shout, live, live. My hope is built. Oh, nothing less than Jesus' blood. We got to go. And righteousness I dare not trust The sweetest spring Oh, holy On Jesus' name On Christ The solid rock I stand Oh All of the ground is sink in set on Christ. The solid rock I stand. Tell somebody you gonna stand to the finish. All of the ground is sink in set. The hope of my life, the hope of my life is in the life giver, Jesus gives me a reason to live. I don't care what nobody says around you, what people have said against you, what people have tried to pronounce over your life. Lift that hand up and shout, Jesus is my reason to live. He's the constant in your life. You can, you can trust him. And, and this is what he wants you to know. He says this, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. Can I tell you something? There are many times in our lives that we mess up, we miss the mark, we come short of the glory. The Bible said all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Every, every shortcoming is not a sin. But there are some shortcomings that we all have in our lives. And we oftentimes walk away from Jesus because we miss the mark. But I need to remind you of something. 
he says to tell you this, I'm right where you left me. I've never left you. I've never walked away from you. And sometimes our mindset is based upon what people have spoken, words that people have spoken over our lives. Have you gone back? Have you done this? And when we begin to try to focus that thing in our mind, and before we know it, we're walking away from a God that knows all about us and still loves us. Tell somebody God still loves you. I don't care what you've done, where you've been, whatever the situation, God says, I still love you and I gave my son. What did he say? While you were yet sinners, Christ died. He gave his son that you might live. Whatever your situations are today, God said, focus on the finish. Pick up. Pick yourself up from where you are. Don't waddle in where you are. Pick up yourself where you are and focus on finishing right. You don't have to wait until January 1st or uh, uh, December the 31st to make up your mind to make a brand new start. Change now! Tell God I'm renewing my focus. I'm getting back on task. I'm getting back on the assignment. And I'm going to finish strong. I'm going to finish alive. Those of you, if you were in the room, would you just lift those hands all over the house? I'm getting ready to close. There may be someone in this room today saying, God, I lost my focus. God, I'm not as focused as I once were. And Lord, I want to finish strong. I want to finish the right way. Lord, renew my focus. Lord, get me back on task. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, God, I, I haven't been focused on you at all. I've been focused on my own life, my own way, doing my own thing. But today, God, I want to change that. And I want to focus more on you. And I want to come to know you for myself. If that's your prayer in any of those, in any of that, would you just come step right out from where you are and meet me at the altar today? I feel that for somebody in this house. Your focus, God wants to renew your focus. He wants to fix your focus. If you're here today, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to fix my focus. I want you to shift my focus. I want you to get me back on task. Amen. If that's you today, would you meet me at the altar? Hallelujah. I just want to pray for you. Glory to God and pray with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I know he's calling. I'm just going to give you a moment to make, make up in your mind. Glory to God. Make up in your mind. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Make up in your mind. Thank you, Lord. Focus. Focus. Focus on him. I want to finish strong. I want to finish strong. I want to finish right. I, I want to finish in the will of God. I want to finish glory to God, doing what he called me to do. I want to finish with my goals in mind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't want to finish any old kind of way. I want to do it the right way. Hallelujah. I feel you in this room. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. We'll wait on you. Amen. We'll wait on you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whatever it is, y'all sing that. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All over this altar here, just lift those hands as much as you can. You got babies. Just, amen. Focus your minds on Jesus. Hallelujah. Focus your minds on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Can I get some help around the altar today? Amen. Help me to pray. Amen. We're praying about focus. Amen. We're praying about focus. We're praying about focus. That's what we're praying about. The right mindset. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do it now. In the name of the Lord. Those of you that are in the congregation, amen. I want you to just point your hands toward the altar and help us to pray. Amen. Maybe you got it. You don't need it, but this altar needs your help today. 
Come on, let's pray together as a ministry. Let's pray together as a people in the name of the Lord. Do it for her right now. In the name of the Lord. Focus this mind. Hallelujah.
Is that your prayer today? So, so no evil can not harm me. this awaiting congregation I thank you now for each and every one that have sat up under this anointing today I thank you that we are focusing on the finish we're not worrying about the past we're not even worried about the present we are focusing on the finish Father we thank you now that everything you have for us, we're going to live to see it happen. We give you praise now that you're touching bodies all throughout this building. Every sickness, every manner of disease, every infirmity, I speak to them now. And we arrest them in the Holy Ghost. We command them to be healed now all across this live sanctuary. Father, we thank you now for your commanded blessing. Heal, deliver, and set free. Every problem, every situation that have stolen the focus of your people. Today we gather our thoughts, we gather our minds, we gather our spirits, and today we renew our focus. Restore us, mind, body, and soul, that we might live out our purpose in the earth. We thank you for it. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we count it done now. Father, there's some among us today that may not be saved. They don't know you from the pardon of their sins. I pray that even while I'm praying, God, that they would receive you as their Lord and personal Savior. Save today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that we're refocusing our lives and we're putting you first. You are our priority. We are nothing without you. We can't make it without you. We can't live without you. So Father, today we make you priority. Come into the hearts of those, oh God, that don't know you, have not received you in their lives. Make them brand new creatures, creating them clean hearts, oh God, and renewing them the right spirit. And we thank you now for it in Jesus' name. I say to us today, let us fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with him in the name of the Lord. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name we pray. If you agree with that prayer today, come on, clap those hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. And it is so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We love the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Encourage someone on both sides of you and just tell them, stay focused, stay focused. Amen. Stay focused. We thank God for you today. We honor God for what he has done in the midst of us. Amen. It's so easy. Amen. To become, amen, unfocused. Amen. Glory to God. But God is calling us to a place, amen, of discipline where we discipline ourselves to stay focused. Amen. When you want something from the Lord, when you want something for your life, amen. Glory to God. In order for it to happen, you got to discipline yourself to stay focused on it. Amen. Amen. So let us do that. 
amen, and our spiritual walk with God, let's do our best to stay focused so that we can receive everything that God has for me. I don't want to be cheated out of no blessing because I didn't do, come on here, because I wasn't focused. Amen. I want God to keep me focused. Amen. So that I can get everything that he has for me. We love you today. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. As we prepare today. Amen. To close out our service on this morning. Amen. Again, we thank each and every one for coming out. Amen. And being a part of our morning worship. We begin every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. on Sunday mornings. Amen. And then we have Bible study on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. Amen. Here in the sanctuary as well as on Facebook Live. You can join either way. Amen. We're really trying to get the people of God. Amen. Back out to the house of worship. Amen. For Bible studies. We're asking you to press your way. Amen. Out. Amen. Glory to God to meet us in the sanctuary for Bible study. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm especially looking for our ministers and elders. Amen. Our deacons, our praise and worship, our choir. Amen. Our the saints, we're looking for you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Some of us are sitting at home with our feet up. Amen. Enjoying the TV. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But can you please give God one hour on Tuesday night? Amen. It's seven o'clock. Amen. Please, let's do this to the glory of God. Amen. Meet us out to the house of worship. Amen. It's something when you get finished with Bible study and you in Walmart and you see the saints. So what you doing at, the, at Walmart and we got Bible study going on? Lord, are you just a Sunday morning saint? Lord, have mercy. Lord, and they don't try to move the other way. Either. Hey, pastor, how you doing? I'm, I'm blessed of the Lord. How you doing? God Almighty, I want to see you in the church. Give God an hour. Amen. Glory to God. 7 o'clock, amen, p.m. on Tuesday, on Tuesday night. Amen for Bible study. We have a wonderful time. We enjoy it on, on Facebook Live and we did it that way. Now we're trying to, amen, get back used to doing it the way, amen, we once did it with both. So it's, it's a little difficult, but we're learning through together. Amen. Amen. So <clears throat> come on out and be with us on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. And then we'll be ready to go home. We'll use that, let you out, amen, right at 8 o'clock, 8, 8, 15. We'll be ready to go home after the announcements and things of that nature so we don't tarry long. So come on out and meet us on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Amen. Glory to God. On this afternoon, amen, at 4 o'clock p.m., amen, we're closing out our 17th pastoral anniversary, amen, for the Cathedral of Hope Ministries in St. George, South Carolina, amen. Those of you that can come and go with us, amen, come and, and help us celebrate the last uh, uh, day of the anniversary. Amen. Amen. Our uh, women's uh, department chair lady, national women's department chair lady of the Sounds of Praise will be our speaker, Pastor Shannon McCray, and the Saints from the Life Transformation Ministries, Columbia will meet us there at 4 o'clock p.m. Amen. Let us come in on fire. Amen. Ready to lift up the name of Jesus and celebrate 17 years of ministry. I'm grateful. Amen. To the Lord for what he has done and what he's yet going to do. Amen. On Wednesday morning at 5.30 a.m., we'll be on the prayer call. Amen. At 5.30 a.m., we're asking everyone to be on that call. If you don't have that information, please get it. The ushers are at the door. They can give it to you. Any other members of this church, amen, should be able to give you that information. So please get it so that you can join us in prayer at 5.30 a.m. And then we're fasting on Wednesday from 6 a.m. until 12 noon. Amen. So please join us. We're preparing for our yearly consecration. So please, ma'am, please, sir, get your hearts and minds ready. Amen. For what the Lord is going to lead us to do for the new year. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to fast and we're going to pray. 
And we're going to call on the name of the Lord because great things are coming in 2023. Amen. And we want to be ready for it in Jesus' name. Uh, I believe that is all of the announcements for um, this week. Yes, ma'am. All the women, amen, please meet our uh, women's chair lady over here, amen, for uh, a few moments. All my, all men, y'all hear that? Y'all gonna have some shrimp and grits on? Uh, I'm looking for my shrimp and grits. There she go. Amen. All right, eight o'clock a.m. Brothers, amen. Let's be on the altar at eight o'clock a.m. next Sunday. The Bible says men ought to what? Always pray. Always pray. And we got some praying men in this church. Amen. So let's be on our knees at 8 o'clock a.m. on next Sunday morning. Amen. And then we're going to have breakfast afterward. Praise the Lord. All right. Everybody. Amen. Look at that. Thank you. Thank you. We thank God. That's our youth pastor. Thank the Lord for him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I, listen, and y'all ought to go ahead and purchase it for $12 because God been talking about 12 all day. Amen. Amen. So God is saying something, amen, to us mighty. So let's go down and purchase, amen, a dinner. And, and I want to tell you something. When you purchase that dinner, you might turn around and go back and get you another one. Amen. We've got some great cooks in this church. Amen. That's I got a... Amen. I'm on a new journey. Amen. Because of these cooks in this church. Amen. But thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. We love you. <laughs> we thank God for you. All hearts and minds are clear. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's thank the Lord for all of our visiting friends again. Amen. Let's stand. We're going home. Amen. Brothers, please make sure you greet our visiting brothers today. Amen. Please make sure you visit our visiting brothers and sisters. Please make sure you, amen, uh, show some love to our visiting sisters. All of our young people, please make sure that you don't pass by anybody. Show them some greater true light love. Amen. Let them know we're glad to have them here at Greater True Light. We pray that you've been blessed by the service today. And that most of all, you receive something out of the word of God in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. We're going to be dismissed. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for how you blessed us so wonderfully, how you put out your power and how you put out your spirit. We thank you because there's none like you in all the earth. Father, we thank you because you're a miracle worker. And there's something great that's going to happen for us before the end of 2022. We're looking forward to it. We're expecting it. We're anticipating it. Any day now, between now and the 31st, you're going to show up for somebody in a mighty way. And we give you glory for it tonight. We ask you now for your traveling verses to our separate destinations. Watch over us and keep us safe. Cover us under your blood until we meet again. And we'll give you glory, honor, and praise for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Hook somebody. Tell them you love them. Please be friendly. Amen and you, you're welcome uh, to go to the kitchen just go straight down make your first right and go straight down just follow the food God bless you in Jesus name